resonance structures. After this video, you should know how to define and explain what resonance is. Recognize when a structure has resonance structures. Draw all the resonance structures for a molecule. Let's first define what resonance is. What do I mean here when I say if there is more than one allowed arrangement of electrons? Well, we are going to look at some examples where we need to put in a double bond in order to make the proper Lewis structure. However, what we'll see is that there is more there's two or more ways of doing this, and all are identical in stability. The molecule will not simply just choose to pick one of these, but rather it will be an average of all of these structures. So let's look at an example of where this would come up. We'll take the example of the NO3 minus ion. Here we will look at the nitrate ion. So we have nitrogen with five electrons and each oxygen, which has six electrons. We also have to remember to add in one because of the negative charge, leaving us with 24 electrons to work with. So now, if we start out by drawing our nitrogen, and then we start out by drawing our skeletal structure with each oxygen around a nitrogen, and we try to fill everything in. You can see at this point we're at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So if we did that, we're left with nitrogen without an octet. So we definitely need to add a double bond somewhere. So we'll go back to the setup. We need to pick one place to add a double bond. Now the question here becomes, where do we choose to add it? So I could add it here. But there is no reason that I would choose to add it there and not here or here. So we have to draw a resonance arrow like this and say, well, it could also be like this or like this. And just to finish off for completeness here, and I didn't quite leave myself enough room, so the brackets need to be a little squiggly. We need to put our negative charge on top of each one. So if I were to ask you for the Lewis structure for nitrate, technically you would have to draw me all three of these because each one is one third of the structure. Now let's discuss what we saw in the previous example a bit more formally and go into some details on the N202 example that we did in class a while back. If we look at nitrate, we can see that all of the structures were completely equivalent. There was no reason to put a double bond on one over one choice over the other. Because these are all equally stable, we drew resonance arrows between them to denote that the real structure is actually an average of the three structures. I wanted to show you one more way this can be written. Sometimes a shortcut will be written with the dotted lines presenting the shared bond, as we have here. However, to be completely accurate, you actually would need to write out all three structures with the resonance arrow like we did in the previous slide. Now let's talk about one last thing. So far, all of our structures have been the same energy level, but it's worth noting that it's possible to have different energy resonance structures, and in fact, you've already seen this done in class. We'll talk about that example on the next slide, but for now, remember that the lowest energy, or the most stable resonance structure, will always be the one that contributes the most. It will also be the one that I ask you to draw. Next year, you'll have a chance to use some of the higher energy resonance structures, like I'm going to show you in the next example, for the sake of some mechanisms. But in this class, if I ask you for a Lewis structure and there is only one most stable structure, you should always write that one down. Now let's look back at our N2O example. So remember that we did this one in class and we had definitely thrown out the choice of having O in the center. So let's walk back through this relatively quickly and go back in your notes if you need extra help. So we had five electrons from each of the nitrogens plus six from the oxygen equals 16 electrons. We decided the arrangement of ions needed to be nitrogen in the center. And when we went through this in more detail, we noticed that we needed to have a total of four bonds. And that could be distributed either as two and two, one and three, or three and one. So after we had gone through and done all the possible distributions, what we saw as our choices was now we need to remember back as to what we said about these and what we said the right Lewis structure was and why. 
So to do that, what we did is we looked at formal charges. And we saw that our formal charges on this one was negative 1 plus 1 and 0, negative 2 plus 1 and plus 1, and then 0 plus 1 and minus 1. When we had done this before, and I was asking you to just draw me a Lewis structure, meaning you needed to pick the most stable one, we had ruled out this one because of the negative 2 charge. We said, well, we want to minimize our charges. So then we had to decide between the first one and the third one. Now, this one has the negative ion, or the negative charge on the nitrogen. This one has the negative charge on the oxygen. And if you remember, we picked this one because the negative charge should be on the most electronegative element if you have a choice. And so this was the correct structure. But what I wanted to talk about this one for here was to point out that all of these are resonance structures and all do contribute to the structure to some extent. It's just this is the most stable one. But there will be times in the future where it's useful to be able to write all of them. Now that we have now that we have done this video, you should be able to define what resonance is and also define what delocalization has to do with resonance. Recognize when a structure has resonance structures. Draw all the resonance structures for a molecule and identify which is the most stable if, not, if they are not all of the same stability.